Hello guys, Board Game here we're, and today we're going to do some solo board gaming. Today we are going to play Street Masters and for the Halloween mood, for the Halloween team, we are going to go against the Davenport Manor with Celine as the boss. And this is a horror, horror team faction or enemy. And we are going in the, a real terror stage. The story of the real terror is that the the monsters from the movies uh, became alive and started attacking moviegoers. And there's a story that we're going to follow. This is Salem Street Part 4. I'm going to read that before we start. And that also uh, guides us in the setup. So I'm going to use Raven. Raven is a monster hunter or a vampire hunter. So this is our fighter that, that we're going to use now um this is this is her this is her miniature yep that's raven and this is celine with the red hair yeah i'm not sure if you can see that because it's a, a little bit a little bit dark yeah so i guess we can begin my popcorn is ready my drink is ready so let's begin Salem Street The night after the first body on Salem Street was found, Celine set her dark ritual in motion. Havoc spread throughout the small suburban town of Hayden like wildfire. Reports came in that monsters were terrorizing people and property downtown. It was there at the heart of the chaos that the 10th annual Creep Convention was being held, where horror fans came from all around to watch classic monster movies. Unfortunately for the attendees, things became terrifyingly real. You think these are works of fiction? Celine asked mockingly as she pushed her pallid mask up to observe her work. Creatures from the silver screen were wrecking the theater's lobby and chasing terrified moviegoers. You worship these monstrosities, but don't give your flesh for them? Shameful. She revved up her chainsaw. There wasn't time to let the reality of the situation sink in. It was time to fight. <laughs> For each rival in play, flip one objective token. We're not going to play rival or ally, so... Uh, I'm not really going through the story. I just pick up this card because it has real terror on it, so we're not really following the story. So we're not going to play rivals and allies. Well, if you have played the part 1, part 2, you might gain allies or rivals there, but we're not doing that now. This is just a one-shot game. So I'm going to play with these actions, simultaneous action, move step actions. Maybe just to keep track of what we have done during our turn. Real Terror, the objectives are miniatures. Uh, sorry, the objectives are characters. We drew Glob and Jerry set. So, sorry, we haven't set it up yet. Set up this Real Terror yet, so let's do that now. It says here, search the deck for the lobby, place it, and then reveal cards from the stage deck until we get an objective. Okay, so Ethan Kramer. So that is our first monster on the board or objective on the board. And I won't be using... I won't be using the objective tokens. I'm going to use proxy miniatures that I can find in my collection. So for Ethan Kramer, I'm going to use this guy that I just converted. Uh, it looks like him, but it's not. Instead of a uh, machete or, or a knife here, big knife, he's holding a gun. It doesn't matter. This is just proxy. I don't... Instead of tokens, why not use miniatures, right? So I'm going to put him here. He's active. And uh, the rest, there are just rules. If we end our turn here in the popcorn or the arcade, uh, when the lobby activates, we're going to get some bonuses there. We roll two or we heal. So yeah, there are just bonuses on the board. And uh, I guess that's it. We can begin by drawing our four cards.
So this is what we drew, isolated prey, dark thirst. So we have two tactics and two attack. Mm -hmm. I shuffled this, but I got two of the same. But that's good, that's good. Tactic and attack, that's a good start. This is a grapple attack. Uh, so we have our four card. We're not gonna do a mulligan. Um, just to s introduce you, this is the house rule card of Celine. She has a curse. When this card enters play, place three curse tokens. These are the tokens. So I guess we can do our turn immediately. So we have Ethan Kramer here. Ethan Kramer here. Um, I think this one is powerful. Moves three spaces towards the nearest door and attacks. Otherwise, it gains one random defense token. It's four dice and three health only. First thing you will do is draw a card. This is the threat phase. We have Bartholomew. We have a minion, a green minion. So this is the minion. We are going to put him nearest to us. I'm going to put him here. Okay, so that's the threat phase. Now we can do some uh, action. We can do move card or action step. I want to go to a crate and maybe end my turn here in the arcade. So I'm going to move three spaces. So if I start here, if I choose to start here, I, I can get here. So I'm going to move three spaces. One, two, three. Uh, what will the this minion do? Uh, on activation, it will advance four spaces toward the nearest fighter and then gain each defense token used to block. Okay, so it gains the tokens used to block his attack. Okay, so that's our move step. We can flip this one just to remind us what we have done. Uh, our action step. Uh, I'm going to defend, to do a defend action. So I'm going to gain two random defense tokens. That's a double punch. Put it there. These two are just the same. Uh, the blue token is just the updated tokens, which is color coded. And this is the old token, but uh, it doesn't matter. Okay, so we have done our action and the card, uh, the move step. Let's do a, a card step. It's better to do a tactic early in the game. So I'm going to put this tactic, Isolated Prey. So each of my attack targeting an enemy that is more than two spaces away from another enemy, I deal plus one damage. So one, if they're alone, I deal more damage. I can exhaust this. I can even move a minion one space. So, you know, you can isolate that minion. It doesn't say if it's adjacent, so that means anywhere on the map, I can move a minion. And then lastly, if I faint, I deal two direct damage. All right. So this is a good card. And that's my uh, act phase. Let's go with the, to the react phase. Uh, the, the cards on my threat phase will move. And this will activate. It says advance four spaces towards me. One, two, three, four. Then retreat one space. All right. Um, and then, let's draw a card. Shadow Assault. I have dirty nails because I I just re I recently painted this miniature. Uh, so, but for now, let's focus on the game. If this disturbs you, I apologize. You can now leave. We flip this one. Enemy turn. This uh, enemy card will activate, so... Attack, targeting each fighter engaged with this enemy, so nobody's engaged with her. And then each fighter not attacked this way gains one curse token, so I gain one curse token. Let's put it here. And Celine gains one random defense token for each curse gained. So I gain one curse, so he gains. she gains one defense. And that's a punch. She has a punch. Now, I forgot to put some defense tokens to, to Bartholomew. Next, the house rules. Activate. Choose a fighter with the most curse. That's me. Celine gains one random token again. 
right punch all right so he, she focuses on defense tokens that's that will accumulate as the game goes on um that's the enemy turn let's do the stage turn so the stage rules here activate the boss flips an, an adjacent inactive objective to its active side the nearest inactive objective is uh, actually the one behind her so she will move that that's inactive maybe just uh, adjacent to it maybe because that's a character they cannot share same space okay next the lobby each fighter in an arcade i am in an arcade um roll to enemy dice this is enemy dice i roll punch and a grab so that the that doesn't do anything because it only gives an effect if you roll matching like a slot machine and then each fighter in a snack area i'm not there but uh we may heal one damage next ethan kramer activate moves three spaces toward the nearest door the nearest door to him is hmm ah this one right so he'll move three spaces there one two three okay and attacks right so he is active that's why he moved that's the end of the stage turn let's draw one stage card intermission the fighters may choose to flip one inactive objective to activate the lobby mm, okay i don't want to do that so it's good that it's optional but this is useful uh maybe late game so you can activate the lobby to heal using the popcorn area then that's the end let's flip this and continue our following turn so the following turns will be faster i won't be explaining anymore so i will just be playing and enjoying the game mm -hmm. Okay, so let's flip this. Let's eat some popcorn. Hmm. Okay. So we have isolated free. It's unique, so we cannot place another one. I'm gonna do a move again. Move step. I'm gonna move over here towards the crate. I'm here, so I'm gonna open this crate. This crate is just... uh. A clay I sculpted just to replace the token because I don't really I'm not a fan of tokens I'm more of a miniature guy so we will get to draw a loot card we got a flashbang let's put it here in the loot area and that's our move action let's do some action step maybe for the action step I'm just going to do a you know uh, just gaining some defense but the more we stall this this objective will go to the door and Celine will gain more defense tokens so we need to attack her later we might attack Ethan Kramer later because if if we attack them and if they're defeated they will go back to the objective area and stay there right so for our next turn next action for the action step hmm it's actually a pain in the ass, this Bartholomew. But uh, for the action, I'm going to do a defense. Let's just prepare for now. A punch and a grab. So for the card step, we are going to do a tactic. But this tactic is already here. So we're not going to do anything for the card. And that's a waste of opportunity. Um... Maybe I'm gonna exhaust this one so I can just move him away from me one space because he moves very fast. So that is our oh, wait, we forgot to draw a threat phase, a threat card during our threat phase. So this is it. Another Bartholomew enters the, the game. This one is a purple one and it's gonna come here. Okay, so that is I am surrounded. I didn't. Uh, expect that I should have moved away but anyway it doesn't matter now so I'm not gonna move him what I'm going to do is instead instead of moving that guy I'm gonna move this purple Bartholomew closer to me so I can attack him um, I'm gonna put some shield tokens here then now that 
he's engaged with me, I'm going to attack. I'm going to do a shadow assault. I'm gonna gain one defense token from the minion and attack two red die. And I'm gonna deal one general damage because um, that's the only enemy that's engaged with me right now. So I'm going to do, I'm going to take his grab, uh, grab defense and then I'm gonna attack. This is a kick and, it, and Bartholomew does not have a defense token for a kick so this is gonna go past his defenses. Okay, so that's a critical, so that's 2 damage, that's 3 damage, and another general damage, that's 4 damage. Oh, okay, <laughs> he's dead. Oh wait, sorry, that's just 3 damage and 1 general damage, 1 general damage, he can block that. So this is 3 damage, wow, I thought he's dead. So 3 damage here, and uh, 1 general, I'm going to choose grab. There we go, that's our card step. Let's see what will happen. The green guy will move 1, 2, 3, 4 towards me and then attack. Their attack is 3 white. Grab, grab, and kick. I'm gonna block 2 grab. And I'm gonna take a kick. Damage, that's 1 damage. That's done. They will retreat one space. And then Bartholomew, the other one, will also attack. That's double punch and a kick. I'm going to block the double punch. Oh, wait. They will gain. Okay, so instead of becoming a power up, they will just gain this. So double punch. I block the double punches. And I receive the kick damage. This one will also go to this guy. Wow, they're, they're buffed. Okay, and then retreat one space. This is the end of second round. Let's draw our card. Ruthless Stalker, another, another tactic that's good for us. Then let's do the enemy turn. She will attack uh, enemy engage with her, but no enemy. I will gain another curse token. I have two curse token now. And then he will gain random defense for each curse token I have. She will gain two punches for that. And then another one. I have two, so he will she will gain another defense. A kick and a grab. Then let's activate the stage. So she will flip the purple. Okay, so actually this is not there's no um objective here because we haven't drawn any uh additional objectives so our only objective right now is ethan kramer and by the way we win the game or rather we lose the game if we die of course or as I said, said here if at least three objectives manage to escape we lose only time we win is when we defeat this boss so two ways to win, two ways to lose, one way to win. Okay, let's continue. So she actually did not go here because there's no inactive objective right now in play. So she's here. And when this activates, the boss flips, then the boss moves three space towards the nearest inactive objective. There's no inactive objective, so let's ignore that for now. Then the lobby, there's no lobby. And then the Ethan Kramer moves three spaces again towards the door. One, two, three. He's almost escaping. We need to attack him later. Yeah, that's the stage. Then let's draw another one. Intermission again. We don't want this. So let's ignore. And then let's do our turn. Threat phase. Slaughter spell. Each fighter gains one curse token. Oh, I got... I have three now. Then Celine attacks each fighter that has at least three curse tokens. Each fighter attacked this way discards all of their curse. Yes. Okay, if no fighter was attacked, shuffle this card to the top two cards of the discard pile. So she will attack me. I have three curse tokens. What is her attack? Three white die. So she will attack me. 
a punch, a grab, and a kick. So I block the punch, but I get damage for the grab and kick. I'm down to 10 health only remaining. So this will be, all my curse will be discarded. Go back to the house rules and this is now discarded. This is gone. So let's, this is our discard pile. Let's put it there. Now that we have that, let's do our turn. We need to attack Ethan Kramer. I'm going to move. The first move that I'm going to do is towards Ethan Kramer. It's going to be one, two, three. And then I'm going to do uh, the action step will be to move again. One, two, three to be engaged with him. And then I'm going to attack during my card step. Okay, I'm going to... Hmm. I can kill him now. I should have used this now. But I'm going to attack using my Dark Thirst. Uh, attack 2. Red die dealing 1 direct damage. If the if he's the only enemy uh, engaged with me, then for each damage I target sappers, I heal a damage. So Dark Thirst, this is a grab attack. I'm going to use 2 dice. And 1 direct damage. He's already damaged one. Plus one. Oh my goodness. Why did I get this? Anyway, I gain a defense marker. So that the grab and then I damage him one and a general damage one. That's two damage. He's still alive. And then I will heal two because I attacked him. I dealt damage. Alright, so we can discard this now. And then that is our card step. Very quick turn and then react phase. All the Bartholomew will move towards me. The green one first. One, two, three. And then attack. So this is triple kick. Triple kick. I will get damage. Five. Uh, three damage. I'm My total damage is five now. And then. Yep. He will retreat one space. And then this one will attack me. Again, three dice. Punch, punch, and grab. I will accept that damage. Because if I block, they will just get the block uh, tokens. So eight damage. I'm now, my health is now seven remaining. I hope I can steal some health later on. So he he retreats one space and that ends the react phase. Let's draw our turn. Let's draw our card. This is another dark thirst. Okay. Then let's do the enemy turn. He will attack, but no engage. Gain a curse. Then he gain she gains a random defense. That's a grab. And then another one, a random defense again. A grab again double grab so this is done the enemy turn now the stage turn she will not do anything there's no inactive objective and then for the lobby nothing Ethan Kramer moves three spaces towards the nearest door and attacks he will move one two three and it says here Remove it from the game and put it here. So that's one escaped objective already. And remove the card of Ethan Kramer from the game. And continue with the draw phase. Astral Havoc. If Zentax is active on the map, which he isn't. So let's not do that. Otherwise, the fighters must flip one inactive objective to its active site. We don't have any inactive objective because we haven't drawn any new objective. So let's ignore that as well. And let's continue with our turn. Starting with the threat phase. Heart Hex. Each fighter may discard any number of their curse tokens. Okay, I have one. For each discarded, Celine heals one. and or, or gain one random defense token. One direct damage. That's okay, I only have one. So we will accept that. We will receive one direct damage. Okay, so we are now at 9 health. This is not going good. 
Um, okay, so this is going to be the last round that I'm going to do and then I'm going to cut off the video. Uh, but I hope you, you know, you get the feel of playing Street Masters and, you know, going against the horror faction. So yeah, this is going to be the last round and then I'm going to enjoy my popcorn and drink my Sarsa Parilla. So that's Thread Face. Let's do our Act Face. I'm really doing bad at this game. <laughs> right now and all of this Bartholomew has a lot of defense tokens there we need to do direct damage you know um so we can move but we're not gonna do that wait yeah i want to put this as the card action card step ruthless stalker this is this is a good card there's an exhaust and a faint and a passive ability so i gain one general damage for each minion in my threat area, I have two, so that's two general damage already. So when I exhaust this, I choose a minion. I can move that minion to my threat area, which they always are. And then, uh, or I can gain one defense token from it, so I can steal defense tokens. Lastly, if I faint this, I gain one defense token for each minion, or from each minion. Then, attack red, attack one. And the attack is direct damage. Okay, this is a, a really strong card, so let's keep that. That's our card step. And then next, let's move. Um, I want to heal, so let's move. One, two, three. I cannot go to the snack area. Hmm. I want to go as far away from the Bartholomew's as possible. But I don't think I can. Um, mamma ma, mia. Okay, I'm going to do, I cannot do any more card step here. I'm going to move and attack. I'm going to move and attack this Bartholomew, one, two. Because he, he only has one health left, so maybe we can kill him now. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Let's attack. Using, that's the move step. My action step will be this one, Monster Hunter. Attack with two red dice, adding plus one red. If the... If I'm only targeting an enemy with 6 or more health. So this doesn't affect Bartholomew because he only has 1 health. So this is just a normal attack. 2 dice. We have a shield. That's a bad roll. And an, a damage. And what's good with this one, you know. Our attack is a kick attack, as you can see here, and this Bartholomew doesn't have a, a kick defense, so that's a damage to him, and he's dead. I also gain a defense token for from that, so I gain a, a kick, and this Bartholomew is dead regardless of how many shield he has left, because that's an attack and not a direct and not a general damage, so he is dead. Uh, killing a minion gives you loot card, so I get a loot card. And this is. Candy bars, yeah. Anytime you may discard to heal one damage. I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna heal one damage and a defense token of my choice. So remove this one damage. And I'm gonna get a defense token. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna get a punch so that I have one of each. And that's it. Uh, let's remove this. Right. That's my action step. My turn is over. This one is gone. This Bartholomew will uh, go to me and attack me using three dice. That's a grab, grab, and a kick. Sure, I'm going to do that. I'm going to block the kicking. Oh no, not the kicking. I'm going to block the grab. So I only gain two damage. And now I have ten damage. I have four health left. And he will retreat one space away from me. Cool. That's the react phase. Let's draw another card. This is Silver Bolt. Deal 3 direct damage to an enemy within 6 spaces of you. This is, that's a killer. That ends our turn. Let's do the last enemy turn before we end the video. So this is the last enemy turn. She will attack any uh, fighter engaged with her. There's none. And then she will just give me a curse token. She will just curse me. And then she will gain 
um, she will gain a defense token for each curse token that uh, she gave. So that's only one. She will gain a kick defense. And then the house rules. Mm, most curse. And she gains random defense token for each curse that uh, she has given me. So that's another two. That's a kick. And a kick. A double kick. Okay, now she's buff. She has a lot of defense tokens now. Cool, cool. So that is done. That's the last enemy turn. Then the next, the last stage turn. We are going to activate this. There's no inactive tokens or she will not do anything. The lobby, I am not in an arcade. I own an arcade space or on a snack space. So let's just ignore that again. Draw another one. This is a Sagamore Slaughterhouse. If Ethan Kramer, which he's not, if active, okay, let's ignore that. Otherwise, each active objective attacks and then moves one space towards the door. There's nothing here, no active, no inactive objective, so ignore that again. That's the, that's the stage phase. And goes back to our turn, and that is going to be the last turn. Uh, of this playthrough, I'm not going to finish the game now. Uh, I'm running out of time and I'm not really doing good. I'm now at 10 health. Oh, sorry, 10 damage. I have 4 health left because I have 14. But yeah, I hope this um, showed you a playthrough of Street Masters as best as I could. I didn't put, I haven't placed any other minions, but these are the minions for... The Davenport Manor. This is Ilfa and I forget the name of this this one. But yeah, those are the minions. I really like the the style of Raven killing monsters when they're isolated. And then he, she can deal direct damage anytime with this card, Silver Bolt. That's one time use, but yeah, they, she has three copies of this in there in her deck. Um, I didn't get to see the other miniatures that I was going to use, but I'm going to use this for the glove because we have the glove as an objective. The glove, and uh, we have an alien, and I'm going to use this for an alien. I really don't have this uh, exact alien miniature, but yep, um, I'm going to use this. This this one is funny a little bit. This is for the mommy. Mommy objective, but they're just lying down. And this is for the count, the Dracula. I'm gonna, I was going to use. And uh, lastly, what I use for Ethan Kramer is this custom miniature that I made. Yep. So that's it. This is the board game hero. Thank you for watching. See you again next time. <laughs>